Hello, 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 and welcome everyone to another episode of The Role Playing Guys. This is Spencer hopping on here to do a little bit of an introduction to the episode. Sorry I didn't do it last week, I was in the middle of moving, so Ty had to cover for me. Well, he did a great job, so let's give a big shout out to him and thank you to him. Before we get into the episode, we want to do a little bit of thank yous and recommendations. As you already know, we are a proud member of the Necropodicon Podcast Network. You can find a lot of awesome shows on the network, such as Indie Film Review, On the Shoulder. On the Shoulder is starting a new season, or they started it a little bit ago, so it's really good stuff. They completely changed what they're doing, so uh, I think they're on episode 6 now. Nick? I mean, hop in here and help me out. Yeah, uh, give me a sec to look at exactly what up. But yeah, they did recently start their new season, which was a kind of like under underwater season, which mm-hmm. is pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, I see about six episodes now for their second season. So if you are looking for another podcast to get into, I'd recommend them. Fate of Eisen, as always, they're golden. Of course. Great stuff. Don from... Uh, the How to Survive How a to Horror survive. Movie podcast. He's really good. He's got a really good podcast too, so check him out. Uh, he was our guest star in the last episode, so definitely support him. Support the network. That is the Necropodicon Podcast Network. Just so you know, we are continuing our uh, highlighting of other creators in the homebrew world and creative world. So if you have something that you're excited about, email us at rollpg13 at gmail.com. Again, that is R-O-L-L-P-G-1-3 at gmail.com. Or you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook and DM us with things that you're doing, uh, creative projects that you're involved in, that you want us to uh, broadcast to our followers. We believe a lot in cross supporting and cross promotional work so if you guys have some stuff that you want us to shout out definitely let us know and we will do that yeah tyler has been doing a real a really good job reaching out to people on uh, twitter and instagram and just shouting people out on a regular basis so tyler's our social media guy he's been killing it yeah he definitely dominates that game thank you nick for hopping in there and giving him a shout out he definitely deserves that he works very hard on that thank you so much to our patreon donors jules and oh, brad yeah, of course you guys geez how could we forget you guys you guys are incredible we want you guys to know that you are the christmas spirit to our <laughs> holiday season so thank you guys so much for supporting the podcast if you if anybody else is interested in supporting us on patreon please do so we love listening or we love getting the support from you guys anything that you guys do goes back into the podcast supporting our rss feed and uh there tyler has redone the tiers of donation levels so that's pretty awesome you guys can get some cool cool stuff from that i was especially thrilled to uh so jules is our newer patreon person uh, i was very thrilled to come up with an npc idea for her and there was a i had a great idea for her back in episode three julia jules the aloy there she's coming on to the podcast soon right is yeah, that I'm gonna s- work out yeah i hope so um that will probably be on a weekend or something but yeah I'm in, I'm in talks with i'm in talks with her again new zealand to america time yeah i mean that is hope- Hopefully very soon, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty tricky to get all that worked out. But uh, yeah, I think those are the big things that we wanted to review. So thank you again to our Patreon donors. If you haven't recommended us to a friend or subscribed to our podcast or rated us wherever you get your podcast, we please thank you and gracias for doing uh, all of those things in the future, obviously. That didn't really make a whole lot of sense. But in summary, please do so. Please recommend us, please rate us, please give us feedback. We love to hear back from you guys. We love to put your recommendations into what we're doing in our podcast. So thank you for your support, and please continue to support us. Anything else, Nick? I think that's it. More than anything, above all the like, the likes, reviews, whatever, Patreon, that kind of thing. What we like most of all, apart from doing the show, is interacting with people who listen to us as well. We love that. That's kind of one of the reasons why we do this as well. That is so, super true. Super, super true. Yeah, I think that's it. I think we can jump right into this.
Well, things are developing quite nicely. I'm reminded of some graffiti I came across the other day. It said, Who watches the Night Watch? It made me smile because I know exactly who watches them. I watch them. Through my words, you watch them. And Bastion and this Jeremy Lee is keeping an eye on them. That's my boy. All right. So to begin the episode, uh, we I need to apologize. I was editing in Audacity, which is a free editing software, and I guess you get what you pay for because I did something and my audio recording completely disappeared. I don't know what happened. So if anybody has expertise in Audacity, please let us know because if you guys want to listen to the actual audio for episode four, we could get that out to you if you give us the solution to this <laughs> Audacity puzzle. It's more like, yeah, it's more like one of one of our audio files, one of our three different audio files um, disappeared somehow. Yeah, it like, just the the file won't open because we record separately in our in our remote location. There's Spencer, then there's Tyler and Brienne, and then there's me, there, me and Rebecca. Those three. Anyway, it is unfortunate, but we are. We're back on track with, we'll get back on episode five. So, uh, yeah. that's kind of a roundabout way of saying that this episode, this recording is a lot shorter because it is just a recap of episode four instead of a full on episode four. Yeah. Why don't we get to it? Nick, uh, are you comfortable imitating the voices with me or? <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love doing voices. Uh, it's one of the reasons I love being a GM. Because you get to be all these different voices. I'll do the best I can. All right. I will do my best as well. Okay. All right. So, um, so we have a kind of a loose script here, but this is more kind of like a back and forth. If we forget, if one of, if one of us suddenly remembers something, we'll talk about that. But anyway, in episode four, um, the gang went back to the headquarters at Valiant. When they were there, they met with Vivian, uh, Vivian, Lance, and Merlin to discuss some new missions that they needed to investigate. At the end of episode three, they finished the mission with that involved Gwen, that involved the Lady of the Lake and all of that. And Simon uh, Gregory. Team, and <laughs> team Corpore A was asked to speak with the editor of Quest Magazine. Oh, I like what you put here, Spencer. This magazine is the modern day equivalent of the National Enquirer or the Weekly World News. In our session, I compared it to the Quibbler in the Harry Potter world. Kind of like not a lot. Most people like take the covers and stories as kind of baloney. But those who love conspiracy theories are really into Quest magazine. So it'll come as no surprise that Robert is a big fan of this magazine. <laughs> of course Robert is. Of course he is. So the editor of this magazine was a fellow by the name of Ralph Emerson. His middle name is Ulysses. <laughs> Not Waldo. We're a little um, disappointed with that. I, I feel like I had to do some, something that wasn't that obvious, you know. Um, but anyway, so the reason why Valiant was interested in Ralph... And Quest Magazine was that he had recently run a story about Valiant and the Flux. And uh, they basically, they realized that Ralph had figured out the truth. Um, Valiant doesn't like the the truth coming out that, you know, Lance Martin is Lancelot, that, you know, the Knights of the Round Table are coming back and that the Flux is actually like chaotic magic and stuff. They don't want to cause panic or hysteria or some or mass hysteria or something. But Ralph somehow figured it out, you know, kind of one of those like threads on a bulletin board kind of thing, conspiracy theorists. So, according to his article, he knows that the round table is coming back along with mystical beings and magic. Corpori A, well, I mean, under the direction of uh, Vivian and Merlin and Lance, decide it's time to time for them to talk with this with this editor, this writer, to minimize the amount of damage that can be caused by him just kind of spilling the beans on any secrets that Valiant wants to keep secret. So, while he may not be the most credible source for kind of anything. Um, <laughs> He does have like kind of tabloid conspiracy theory level kind of thing. He has enough followers to make the work of Corpori A very difficult if he wants to. So the team arrives in Ralph's home where Robert uh, again teaches the team how to ring a doorbell. I forgot about that. Weren't some of the other people like trying to knock or something or trying to bang the door down or whatever? Well, it, it was just kind of everybody was standing there and nobody said that they went up to the doorbell. So Robert assumed That's that right. nobody knew how to do it, even though he <laughs> taught them when they went to Simon Gregory's house. So he yeah. had to teach them again. So Ralph answers the door, invites the team into his office. 
Luckily for Corpori A, it is not in the basement filled with severed heads. Instead, the walls are covered floor to ceiling with cut-out pictures, map, red yarn connecting everything, of course. Stacks of magazines and books litter the floor and the desk. A couple chairs are available, though walking space is very limited. So Ralph greets them with a smile and he says, I have been expecting that you would arrive here soon. It was only a matter of time before Valiant came to visit me. Now tell me, who are you? Really? Because he gathered the fact he believes that everyone who works for Valiant is actually a reincarnated knight of some kind, which is not entirely true, but, well, two of the four members of Corpori A are El, Lady of Shalott, and Britta, a soul day. And so he was referring he was referring to all of that, you know, the, the reawakened forms of old legends. So El and Britta were excited to share their story, and Ralph just kind of eats all of this up, and he assumes that Robert and um, Scotty are as well, but it's kind of like, Scotty was a bit stubborn. Kind of, He first told Ralph that he didn't deserve to know and that his identity is classified. Then Scotty insists that he is the, the honorable knight. <laughs> Joe Mama. Joe Mama. And Ralph sits there for a moment. Oh, I love this. So he, I love role playing this. He's just kind of sitting there like, he's going through some books saying, that can't be true. Arthur never had a knight by that name. The, the, the returning of knights must be uh, much more extensive than I ever, ever imagined. Uh, Joe Mama is more of a, uh, it's a... It's not an Anglo-Saxon name at all. It's got to be more, uh, much more Far Eastern uh, origin, perhaps. And so, Scotty happily explains that his full name is Sir Joe Mama from Djibouti. Uh, <laughs> when, when Ralph asks who Robert is, Robert oh. explains uh, quite politely that he is Robert R. Roberts. And at that moment, Ralph realizes <laughs> that perhaps not all the workers of Valiant are reawakened knights. Uh, some of them are from right. today and nothing else. And I yeah. think internally he begins to question whether Joe Mama really is from Djibouti. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I loved playing that kind of thing where it's like, you know, Ralph is not stupid. But he he, he looks. He said things. that that was the best part. Yeah, I'm not I'm not an idiot. Like people think I am, but I'm not stupid. Like you know, Yo Mama was not a knight, but of course that's not the point. It's it's a it's a Yo Mama joke, yeah, thing kind of thing. In case that wasn't clear, I don't know. There might be some listeners who might not have gotten that yet. But that that was that was Tyler slash Scotty's intention anyway. Um, but he kind of like took it the wrong way, which I had a lot of fun doing. But anyway, um, the team discusses with Ralph some very important matters regarding the story, uh, like kind of the, talking about Valiant and everything. Ralph wanted to do wanted them to do something for him as kind of a way to earn his trust sort of a thing so he would work with Valiant more and not spill all the beans. Also, there's a holiday that Ralph invented called Salt Day uh, in commemoration of the number one resource of the Great Salt Flats Basin. Um, this kind of came up earlier because like I was I was describing what Quest magazine was and this tabloid kind of like uh, kind of thing and how I think it was I think it was you Spencer that kind of brought up like uh, Robert saying oh yeah I love Quest I love Quest magazine they talk about we should be celebrating Salt Day like yeah you know, Robert, Salt Day should be a national yeah go during, ahead. during the conversation with uh, Vivian Robert brought up Salt Day asking if they would get the Friday off because it was in fact Salt Day that Ralph had yeah. created <laughs> And he was very excited to actually meet Ralph to discuss this because during the conversation with Vivian, Vivian, through a slip up, essentially said that if Robert wanted Friday off, he would have to talk to Ralph about Salt Day and get permission from Ralph. At least that's the way that Robert interpreted Vivian's statement. All right. So, so yeah, there's all that stuff. And Vivian just kind of like rolled her eyes about all that Salt Day stuff. But yeah, so anyway, Ralph redirects the conversation to the real reason he wanted representatives from Valiant there to talk with. He said, "Look, I have enough to make the I have, I have enough to make the work of Valiant impossible. I, I I may not have a huge fan base. I have a devout one. Um, they will they could do what I say, and honestly, you know, I'm, I'm happy to expose secrets. Um, but I do think you're doing good work. I, I I don't want to if you can." Prove your worth to me. You're doing something for me. Then I, I'll, I'll avoid trying to disrupt your work. I want you to do something for me first. So the party thinks about it for a while, considering that you know what he could possibly do, the information he has. They decide it'd be better to have Crazy on their side 
instead of against their side. So they accept the mystery job from Ralph. So Ralph says, my wife goes missing for days at a time. When she comes back, she has bruises and cuts all over her. I don't know what's going on or why. I, I just want you to follow her and tell me what she does. If you do, I will let you decide what, what sort of story I publish next about you and how, how you would like me to spin it. If you don't accept this, I'll publish a story just kind of uh, saying whatever I want, really. Um, if, um, if you really aren't valiant knights, and uh, make it look like you're more of a danger to the city. Because honestly, who's to say that you aren't more of a danger than, than the flux itself? So if you do this for me, I will publish a story t- talking about uh, one of two things. Your, your choice. I, I'm torn between them. Either I focus on you, the, you, you individual members of this particular team, and what you do for the city... Or if you'd like a uh, more, more general approach, I can talk about kind of the knightly code of ethics, what you stand for more than your actual deeds. Um, I don't want to reveal too much, but any, either, either of these angles sounds good to me. But before that, just just find out what's going on with my wife. Wanda is her name. That, that's where the Waldo came in. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, Robert and Scotty already have a couple of ideas. Scotty asks if she has the bruises and cuts before she leaves and if Ralph has any mind-altering drugs. Uh, the case seems like domestic domestic abuse to him, and so they're they're kind of wondering if that's what's going on. Robert immediately says that it's Fight Club. He asks Ralph if his wife talks to him about what she does, and Ralph says she doesn't. And Robert explains, "Ah, the signs are obvious. The first choice of Fight Club is to not talk about Fight Club." <laughs> um, luckily, Elle and Britta are there to bring the conversation back, as they often do, and they speak on behalf of the team accepting the job. They get details of. A few places that Ralph's wife likes to hang out. So there's three kind of like pubs or restaurants, essentially. They are the Slender Beetle. Spencer came up with that name. Dragon's Lair is the official name. And but it, it, everybody calls it Dragon's Keep. Yeah. Everybody does. <laughs> Dragon's Keep is a like back in the Provo Orem, area, Provo Orem Lehigh area. That's um, like we went we went to Dragon's Keep a, a few times. Some, sometimes to play D and D there. It's it's a game and. It's a board game, tabletop game, and comic store kind of thing. I call it Dragon's Lair because I wanted it to be a bo- uh, like a board game cafe, but everyone kept calling it Dragon's Keep because they they knew they knew what I was going to do. Oh yeah, was it was pretty to. see-through. We just we knew what it was, especially because it already was set in the Provo area. Yeah, I, I mean that's, that's kind of the, that's kind of the point. But I, I, was, I was trying to account for the fact that times change, but apparently not that much. Uh, also, Up Chuckies is also a reference. Um, so there's a there's a buffet chain called Chuckaramas uh, out here. It has a, a slight um, sort of uh, pioneer vibe to it, but it's it's this big buffet and everything. And my parents and I guess several other people that we know like to call it Up Chuckies sometimes because. It's, you know, we've seen people eat a lot there and just kind of like up chuck some of their food there. Not not a lot. It's, it's up. You know, Chuckarama has has good food and stuff, but I I decided to veil it a little bit and call it up Chuckies. But you know, the secret came out. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, those three places: a Slender Beetle, Dragon's Lair, Keep. I'm going to say Dragon's Lair, but sure. Everyone kept calling it Dragon's Keep and Up Chuckies. Um, maybe I'll accidentally say Dragon's Keep, but anyway. We, they decide to try Dragon's Lair first, the board game cafe. So when they arrive there, Corpori A looks around for Wanda. They have an image of her, by the way, so they could um, kind of reference, see where she was. Britta wastes very little time in asking around before going up to the kind of one of the clerks or bartenders. She, she asks if there's a secret back room where people go. Here yeah, in she, str- Lair. she straight up just asks, do you just have like, a secret see, back room? I mean, like, Britta is also like the famous Britta as well. So the lady says yes, but to get there, they have to prove they are worthy. <laughs> um, Britta quickly ex- quickly explains that she is Britta. She doesn't have to prove anything to anyone. She rolled high enough to have the bartender agree with her, and so Britta was just let in. Scotty decides he wants to go down with Britta. Um, the bartender insists on proving his worthiness because Scotty has very low rep points. I'm like, who are you? I don't know. Whatever. Scotty accepts the challenge. It's basically speed monopoly uh, because, you know, what better way to test your gaming prowess then with Monopoly, right? So Scotty actually cheats his way to victory by using some of his holographic magic. He's able to kind of deceptively, very trickily pretend that there are more like houses in one place than another or something or whatever. But he's able to use holography to trick the, the lady who works there. And he is admitted into the back room. So that leaves Ellen and Robert. They stand there at the bartender for a little bit before deciding, you know what? They don't want any part in this. 
They're going to split up, split the party, always a good idea, to the <laughs> Slender Beetle. So, Britta and Scotty, this was, this was a great segment. I'll do, I'll do some of the voices here, definitely. They walk into this big room, kind of this basement area, where there's multiple campaigns of tabletop RPGs being played. Um, they go up to a table and they begin talking with like a, a table, which includes a couple of guys named Wyatt and Danny, asking directly if they know who Wanda is. So the guys look a bit confused and offer very little help. And so uh, Danny's kind of like, oh, well, you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe she comes here. Maybe she don't. Maybe she doesn't. Uh, I don't really recognize her all that much. And Wyatt's kind of like, oh, I don't know, man. Uh, I don't know how well I'm impersonating Wyatt and, and Danny, but... Uh, <laughs> well, listen to season one and season three, and you'll be able to find out exactly. whether he's doing well or not. Uh, I like to think so. But anyway, um, Britta asked a very important question after showing a picture of Wanda to them. Uh, who is prettier, Wanda or Britta? You have to Wyatt. do Britta's voice. Okay. All right, guys. So here, so we're looking for this lady, right? I, I have to ask you a very important question. Who is, who's prettier? Who is more good looking? <laughs> And remember, this is like, what if Taylor Swift is showing you a picture of this random lady asking who is prettier, right? Like, this, that's how I always re- compare her to Taylor Swift or Katy Perry or something. That's kind of their levels of fame here. Well, well known in popularity. Um, Wyatt and Danny are kind of caught off guard. And uh, Wyatt's like, oh, I mean, uh, uh, you're younger, I guess. But uh, I don't know, man. I guess, I guess I'll have to... S- Kind of put me on the spot there, and Danny said, "Well, I uh, don't, I don't really like to do this kind of thing. You know, I think it's kind of rude to uh, mm-hmm. say whether one lady is better prettier than the other. But I don't remember if they made a con- man. No, they a they ended up not saying anything. They just kind of hemmed and hawed. It was more just me having fun and trying to embody their personas, at least as far as I can tell. Uh, but." Yeah, Scotty jumps in and answers that Wanda is, for which he receive, which he receives what can only be described as a death glare from Britta. So, moving to the Slender Beetle, this this place is more of a like an actual bar or pub, just, um, straight up. Robert rushes to the restroom while Elle looks around. It takes all of two minutes for Elle to find Wanda sitting at a table with some of her friends. Uh, Wanda's kind of like, t- her back is kind of turned a little bit, but she can, um, like, it seems pretty clear that it is her. So Robert returns, oblivious to the fact that Wanda's there. Robert asks, you know, what are we doing just sitting here instead of uh, instead of doing something? So Elle asked, what happened in the previous night? And tell it to me now. Um, Robert gets into a big explanation. Do, do you want to do an explanation of what happened in the last episode of Tell It To Me Now? Oh, geez. It was just a bunch of stuff because... Rebecca totally caught me off guard asking me to describe specific <laughs> things of what though. happened. In the you episode, just rattle on. Yeah, I went on for a good like ten minutes. I was going to cut at least like half of it because it just like <laughs> it went on. She just kept going, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Uh-huh. So it just kept going, and Robert yeah. explained extensively what happened in the episode as well as why each moment was significant in relation to the rest of the series and the season and the episode specifically. <laughs> He also explained all of the jokes and why the jokes were funny. Yeah. And so, uh, Elle, Elle was doing this because she didn't want, like, she believed that if Robert saw Wanda there, Robert would be like, oh, hey, there's Wanda, or, or something like that. She didn't want to draw attention to them. Kind of and thing. he's got a loud enough and obnoxious enough voice that he probably yeah. would have gotten them caught. Exactly. And it's like, uh, Rebecca slash Elle, like, just knew this right off. That was... That was uh, was uh, clever on her part. So anyway, Elle and Robert chat for a bit. Um, Robert explains that Elle is paying for his drink and that it's, he considers it kind of a date or something. Um, the bartender looks at the middle-aged Robert and tells Elle, you could do so much better. <laughs> um, because, oh yeah, wasn't it this episode where you said that Robert was like in his... Yeah, he's 48. 40s? 48, late 40s. We We all thought it was more like early 40s, late 30s or something. So he's he's older than we all thought he was. Elle sent the private message via on her iPhone to Britta and Scotty saying that she found Wanda. Robert's still oblivious to all this, uh, returns to the conversation, returns the conversation to one of the few things you can actually talk about. So Wanda gets up with her friends and starts walking out the door. Elle 
you know, leaves payment and tip on the counter and drags Robert out with her. And Robert's all confused and stuff. She continues. Actually, no. Robert keeps talking. Um, he just kind of goes on and on and on. He doesn't even notice that Wanda has left or that they had left for that any they, reason. They, yeah. Ellen Robert um, follow Wanda towards the third location of Chucky's. So, again, Al sends a message to Scotty and Britta. They're, they're at El Chucky's. And the episode pretty much ended there. Like, they're about to go into Up Chucky's to try to confront Wanda. Now they've pretty much cornered her with pretty much without her knowing it. And that is pretty much the entire episode in summary. Sorry so much that we had to do this version of it instead of actually listening to the 10-minute rant by Robert. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess if you want to hear something similar, you could listen to Robert or... Uh, What's his name? Patton Oswald's filibuster from Oh gosh, his his Star his Star his Wars Star Wars and Marvel crossover filibuster and Parks and Parks Recreation. And Rec. More or I less that. that sort that of thing gold. where it just yeah. is nonsense for ten minutes. Yeah, so that's about what Robert did. Uh, not to compare myself to Patton Oswald. I mean he's a professional <laughs> comedian. No, you're comparing you're comparing Robert to Patton Oswald. Well, well not nah, whatever. But yeah, it is it is a bummer. I I think this is very good though that we were able to talk about this and kind of give a more. Re- I I feel like we can we've been able to give a more realistic sense of like what happened and stuff, like kind of talking back and forth, as opposed to like a scripted sort of thing. Yeah, and we'll be back for episode five. I've already started the edits on that, so we'll be back next week with that. And as I mean, praying to whatever deity you do that audacity (laughs) doesn't fail me again um and we'll go from there but thank you guys so much please rate us subscribe recommend us to everybody that you know anybody who has a smartphone or a computer or access to the internet really i think that does it so i am stopping the recording okay here's the deal you like podcasts that's cool so do I. Well, the podcast you just listened to is part of the Necropodicon Network, which is bloody dripping with top-shelf podcasts that will make your ears go pa-cow and your brain go, hey, thanks, this is dope. Head to necropodicon.com to learn more. Necropodicon, it me, what that?